In this video, we're gonna talk about how to add some audio feedback to our moving platform. So when a platform is moving, we may want to hear an audio cue that's looping while it's moving. So for example, like a, like a humming or some um, looping sci-fi electricity thing, as well as when we activate this, we may want to hear a unique sound at the moment that it's activated, as well as a unique sound at the moment that it is deactivated. We would refer to that as audio feedback, and I want to implement that into my moving platform. So to do that, since all of this is contained inside of a blueprint, we are going to open up the blueprint, and we're going to add a component that we can use to play our looping sound. If you think about it, we want our audio to follow our object, right? So we need to create an audio component that will be a child of the moving platform so that as it gets further away, the sound fades out, or if we're on top of it, we can hear it very clearly. In order to do that, we need to start off with a audio component. If I go into my viewport, I can add a component of type audio. Another thing I may want to do is position this audio component where I want it. You know, depending on what the static mesh was, this is still just a placeholder. But if we, for example, had some engine motor on the bottom, we could place it right around that. In this case, I think that's fine. I'm going to put it in the middle. But the other thing is that when this static mesh is moving, this audio component is not moving with it. And we could animate that too. But I think it'd be even easier if we just drag and drop this. So this this component will now move as this static mesh moves. And now that we have our audio component, let's try setting this up. The first thing we know we're gonna need is a few different sounds to play. So I'm gonna mark those in my variables right up front. Make a new variable and we can call this one movement sound. And this is going to be the sound effect I wanna play from this audio source that follows the platform around. So this, this is gonna be the motor or the, the looping engine sound or whatever you want. I am gonna make that visible to the designer. I do want them to switch it out. I'm gonna search here for sound. And because I don't know if I wanna use a sound wave or a, a sound cue, I'm just gonna use a sound bass and just cover everything. Movement sound, and we can make this more specific if we wanted to, but I think this is fine for demos. Instance editable. Once we do that, we can compile, save, if we wanted to set a default, we could. Technically, we could do this all from the audio component over here if we wanted to set it up right here. I think that would be another reasonable way to set this up. I kind of like that it's not set to play any sound by default in case you know the de designer doesn't want it, but I want to give them the option to have a sound to throw into there. Let's actually set this audio up to play. And in order to do that, I want to break this out even more. So whenever we resume our movement, I want to um, actually create a new custom event. And we'll call this play feedback. We're gonna pull this down somewhere over here. When we resume our movement, one thing I want to do is I wanna turn on the audio and maybe particle effects and other things. So I want to call my play feedback event. So if you type that in, whatever you named it. I'm gonna hop down here, and this is where I'm going to play all my audio, play all my visuals, and all my other cool effects that happen while my movement is active. And you might also think at this point you want a stop feedback. So I may want another custom event. Add custom event. Uh, you know what, I think this is better. Let's call this deactivate. Uh, we'll do that one word. Deactivate feedback. And I'm gonna rename this top one. Activate feedback. And you'll notice that it automatically renames it. So whenever we resume movement, we wanna activate our feedback. Whenever we stop movement, want to deactivate feedback there. Make sure you click on the right one. It's gonna to try to auto-complete. So play all of our deactivate, our stop sounds, our you know turn off particles and hop down here and do that. So let's actually fill this out. In order to activate feedback, we need to have, we need to turn on our sound effect. 
So to do that, we just need a reference to our audio component right here. We pull off of that. All we need to do is play. However, you'll notice that by default, our audio component is empty. So now we need to set the sound effect into our empty audio component. This would be useful if I wanna hot swap out multiple different kinds of sound effects. So I'm just setting myself to be able to do that later. And that's gonna be called set sound. And you will need to pull off the audio component to do this because we need to know which audio component to set the sound effect to. So once we do that, the sound that we want to put in the audio component is going to be whatever the designer said. So I'm going to hook that up right there as well. So put an audio clip into the audio component. So at this point, we'll slot something into there. And then we will tell it to play, right? When we deactivate the feedback, all we need to do really I'm going to copy this audio component down here. It just tell this entire component just to stop, right? Just stop playing the audio. And that should be it. Let's compile and save. And you're going to notice a few things, and we'll work through them. If I were to hit play, nothing would happen, and that's because the designer has not designated a movement sound. If we're looking through these, there's a few we could do. Um, Let's just go with a generic uh, light hum sound. So we can look through here. Starter content audio, we can click. Uh, um, I actually like this light O2. So my movement sound, I'm just going to click the drop down and type in light, go down to O2. You can actually do the queue or the uh, direct file. This will have more designer control. Either way is fine. So if we play, you can hear it while it's active, right? Now, we hear it on this one, and that's because we set this one to be light cue. This one did not have one. Just know that this is the downside of exposing that control, is that now we're requiring the designer to specify if they do want a sound, they need to put it in. The other thing you might notice is that the audio component may not have the attenuation you want. And what that means is if you're really far away, you may be able to hear it at various distances. And if this is what you wanted, cool. If not, then I wanna show you how to control that. So if you go into your audio component over here and you look down here, what you can do, once you put in a sound, you can actually declare what you want the attenuation to be. So if you click override attenuation, on this component, that's saying this audio source that we're here that we're listening to, we want to control how how big that is. Now, by default, it's actually pretty big. I'm going to change the attenuation function to uh, natural sound. All this means is that instead of a straight line, like one to one, as I get closer, it's going to perfectly increase volume. This is a fall off; like it'll have a pretty steep. When we get really near it, we'll hear it really quickly. And that emulates real life a little bit more closely. And you know, I can adjust this in the viewport. So if I go to the viewport, I can see that this is gigantic, right? I, I don't really wanna hear this sound that far away. So I'm, I'm gonna manually adjust this a bit. Maybe when I'm directly over the center of the platform, I do wanna hear it at full volume. So anything within this inner circle is gonna hear it at max. This outer circle is going to kind of hear it depending on the fall off. So, Outside of the circle, you shouldn't hear it at all, but as you move further inside this outer circle, you will. We'll see what happens. I'm gonna put this at 600. File save. You know, I, I think that's good. Another thing is this auto activate. I do wanna turn that off because I'm gonna control when that plays and when that does not. I'm gonna save that. Let's go back here, hit play. Again, we don't hear it. Now we hear it. It may be a little bit more, more subtle than it was before. And you can adjust that if you want, but I just wanted to show you how to control that. So we're actually playing a sound, so that's cool. I think the next thing I wanna start setting up is how can we play an activation sound? So if I were over here in this box, I may want to hear a engine startup when I hit the activate trigger instead of hearing this follow uh, the platform around. 
Um, I want to hear a more specific sound when it starts and then also a specific sound when it stops. <laughs> 